Hi, my name is Dave Halsander. I work at Excellus Visual Information Solutions. I'm a senior application scientist here. Today we're going to be talking about data transforms. Data transforms are a powerful tool in the geosciences, allow you to combine and cut through a lot of data to get to the answers that you hopefully care about. However, like a lot of powerful tools, a lot of the information out there is written by experts for experts, and it's too much detail for most users than they really need or want. So let's lay out the basics and what they can do for you. We've got three main transforms that people use. Principal components, minimum noise fraction or maximum noise fraction, and independent components. And they're all kind of cousins of each other. For principal components, if we imagine that we've measured something with one band in remote sensing, so it'd be a real low budget sensor, then most of the stuff that we look at is going to be kind of in the middle or average. Really dark stuff would be here, really bright stuff would be out here. And most things would fall in the middle. A histogram would look like a normal distribution like that. If we got a little more budget and we had a better sensor and we got two bands, we'd add a second axis this way. And in a histogram in this case, instead of a curve, we'd be looking at a cloud of points. And most of the stuff in the world is pretty average. So we'd kind of have a blob here in the middle. But that blob would actually be kind of long. And you'd see things are sort of correlated that way. What principal component says is forget the original bands. Let's look at these with a different set of numbers to try to get more information out. It says, I bet if I draw a line through the middle of this cloud and use that as a new axis, I can capture most of the information in this cloud in one number instead of two. So we get efficiency this way as well. And then anything that's left, I can draw through a second axis. You always get as many components as you have input bands. The difference is your first components contain a lot more information. That information, or variance, will trail off through your components. You get your info and your components and the info content will work like this. Now how you draw those lines is based on the statistics and the data. That works for principal components. What MNF does is says let's incorporate the noise statistics as well. So on this axis when we do MNF, it's not just information. We get a signal to noise ratio. And that tells us when we get down to a value of 1, that basically what we're seeing is signal is about equal to noise. All the info in our data is over here. Now there's some assumptions there about normal distributions and how we expect the statistics to work. And over the years we've seen that isn't always the case in remote sensing in the earth sciences. Things are always more complicated than we think. Independent components uses more advanced statistics, draws those lines in a different way, to get at the same results, but it does a better job of not putting your signal down here and moving it more into these bands. For more information, some great graphics and how-tos on Envy on how to use these statistics and transforms to your benefit, check out our blog at imagerspeaks.excellusviz.com.